What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another Euro 2020 fancy video. In this one, I'm talking about my must-own players. There's five in total and they are players that no matter what kind of changes and tinkering I do to my match day one squad ahead of Friday's deadline, I think they're going to be included in my final team and I'll do a team selection video later on this week. There's cheap players, there's expensive players, there's captaincy reasons, there's the days they're playing reasons and stuff like that as well. But I'm going to go for all that in just a sec. So if you enjoy it, give it a like, hit that subscribe button if you're new around here and let's jump into it. So just a couple of caveats before we fully jump into talking about the players. One, there's no England players in this. I know there's people thinking, right, you're biased, you're an England fan, you think it's coming home, but there's no England players in this list of five. Um, and also, I'm on a match day one and three strategy when looking at players because I'm going to use my limitless chip in match day two. So if a player's got a good match day one, match day two fixture, and they look like must own, I probably haven't included them in this, uh, in this video. But for me, Lukaku is probably the number one. I'm trying to think of, you know, from the first draft I made to the current one and all the ones in between, of which there's been a lot of tinkering, um, I feel like Lukaku has probably been in every single one. I don't remember a point where I've gone, right, I need. let me just save a bit of money here and see if I can bring in another player and then upgrade elsewhere. I think two or three premiums is definitely going to be the strategy that everybody goes for in this just because of the lack of midfielders. And Lukaku's never left the draft, and therefore um, he will definitely be in, and he's definitely down as must own. I went through the stats. So instead of looking at Euro qualifying or World Cup qualifiers, Nations League, um, I looked at the players' last 10 games, right? So how many matches did they feature and then how many times did they start? So he's played 10, he started in all 10, 11 attacking returns, 9 goals, 2 assists. The guy's an absolute machine, especially for country. He's got over one return per, per game, right? That's better than Eden Hazard, who's also got a really good record for Belgium as well. And when you're on... Well, when you're looking for players for match day one and three, then you've got Russia and Finland. Now, of course, the other thing to take into account is which teams might rotate in match day three. You know, if Belgium beat Russia and they beat Denmark, that's six points already. Chances are they're already going to be through. Will they start rotating players? I think that is something to think about, but I don't want it to completely change my strategy because ultimately we're not going to know until match day three just what the situation is this is a knockout tournament yes obviously you've got the groups first of all but anything can happen in those groups so he is definitely in for me russia and finland he also provides really good captaincy options both for match day one um, and where the only other team really you'd probably want is from Denmark anyway. You're definitely going for Lukaku over someone like Ericsson for Capsi, unless you just want to be different, of course. Uh, and then in match day three, he does play the same day as Depay, but I don't think that would put me off having maybe both. Um, and so Lukaku is definitely in there. There's question marks over whether Hazard will be fit to start the first uh, game. There's question marks over whether De Bruyne will. I think with De Bruyne, it's looking pretty likely that he won't. But I just think the quality they have, they're going to bring in Carrasco. They've got Mertens. They've got Tienemans. They've got a very settled team in terms of formation and tactics. They play the back five. They've done that for a long time. They used to have in wing backs. Hazard, Thorgan Hazard on the on the left. Mounier, maybe Castagne, but probably Mounier um, on the right. It's a team where everybody kind of knows what's going on. They know how it's going to be played. And Lukaku, I think, is just going to take the mantle of the talisman. If De Bruyne and Hazard are, are missing... I don't think Lukaku's going to care. And I think there's plenty of goals for him. And given that he has not left any of my drafts from draft one to whatever number draft it is now, he's definitely in for me. Right, I've got my headphones in for this one. And the reason is I want to pronounce this name correctly. I'm going to be saying his name a lot. Therefore, I want to get it right, okay? And I'm going to listen to it and then I'm going to say it while I'm recording. So I'm going to listen to it now. Yoki Mail? Mail? I've been saying like mealy, but it's male, apparently. I, I've probably got that wrong. I apologize. I'm going to take the headphones out now and carry on recording. This is a fullback for Denmark. Now, with the match day one and three strategy, like I've just spoken about, you miss, not only do you miss Lukaku against um, Denmark, which I think is their toughest fixture, you also miss Denmark against Belgium, which is their definitely their toughest fixture. There's no doubts about that. And either side of that, they play Finland and Russia. Now, I know both of these teams, that it looks like Puki might miss match day one. We'll have to wait and see on that um, i know russia have got you know zuba etc um that people are expecting to do well but i think denmark's defense is uh, i wouldn't say it's kind of going under the radar because everybody has a, De a danish defender but i do think they're probably going to do better than some people are giving them credit for um, and a 4.5 million defender right now he is the one that i have now obviously kier the center back is absolutely nailed on right there's no issues with him playing but i think male 
Mil <laughs> will will also play as well. Now he missed the second friendly, but he did come on. Um, and there was a clip that was posted on Twitter a few times. I can't remember who the first person to post it was, but basically it just showed how attacking he was on that left hand side, just running through defenders, or at least trying to run through defenders. And I had a look, right? So he has now played um, a part in ten matches. He's only started six of them, so he is quite new to the team. Uh, in comparison to other players we're going to talk on this list. But he's already got two goals, one assist in just six starts, right? I think one of those attacking returns was coming off um, the subs bench. But still, he's played a part in 10 games. He started six times. He's already got three attacking returns. For me, I just think I'm already looking at my team thinking it's quite template, right? A lot of people are going with two or three premium uh, forwards, a lot of 4.5 million defenders. I want to do something a little bit different. I know his ownership is going to be relatively high still. I know covering the Denmark clean sheet, you might even have to double up to make it worth it. But I think he will be worth it. He's so attacking. I think he's going to get chances against Finland and Russia. And there's a good opportunity for clean sheets. And obviously we know with this game you can sub players out as well. So even if he doesn't do very well, uh, I can swap him. This is not me sitting here saying that Kier is a bad pick. Because right now I think I've got both of them. But if I'm only picking one, I'm going to go for the one that's more attacking. And Mail, he's the one. Did I get it right? So I, like everybody else, kind of knee-jerked a little bit when we saw the Italy versus Czech Republic lineup. I know a lot of people were like, I told you what Chiesa wasn't going to start, etc. But ultimately, it didn't matter. We're going to know the Italy lineup before the deadline anyway. So you can be as in the know as you want. We're all going to know it, as long as you're paying attention, right? But it does look like Chiesa might not get the nod. If you look at the last two friendlies, so I think Italy played San Marino, then they played Czech Republic. It was all change against San Marino, but... Against Czech Republic, it pretty much looked full strength. It's the team that you would expect to start the Euros, apart from some people thought it could be Chiesa. On the right, it turns out it was Berardi. So right now, he's given us a bit more money to spend. So I've talked about him a lot, but he's not the must-own player. Yes, I'll probably have him in my team, but um, I'm not that fussed about him. But it has given me a bit more money to play with. And now, I'm looking at Insigne as... Probably a must own in my team to the point where I'm probably going to own him. I don't really see a reason why I wouldn't. Obviously, he impressed in that game. Uh, I think he got a goal and insist. But one thing with him is he pretty much always plays 90 minutes. The minutes are important, especially when we're already worried about some players will they get 60 to 70, some players will they get rotated. I don't think we're going to see it with him. Um, and the other thing is he plays first. In, all, in both the match days that I'm looking at. So, yes, I know a lot of people fancy Turkey to do well. But also, I think Italy are going to do really well in this. And I, I know, obviously, they've seen as a defensive team. Um, they've gone unbeaten. But they do score quite a few goals. I've talked about this in other videos as well. And, and putting four past Czech Republic is pretty decent. I'm not saying Turkey are um, as poor defensively as the Czech Republic. But I think Italy can do a job here. And the important thing is we can change players right and he plays the first day so plays on friday against turkey if it does no good with the captaincy i can switch it if he gets me a few points one assist maybe then yeah okay potentially i just um swap him off the captaincy but keep him in my team and if you look at his recent returns he has got 10 returns in the last 10 matches right which is pretty decent he is more likely to get you an assist than a goal which obviously is not worth as many points but still He's someone that can get you decent points against Turkey and then potentially against Wales as well. So in match day one, like I said, plays on the Friday and then you can switch. On Saturday, you've got Belgium. Sunday, it's England and Netherlands, etc. But in match day three, I'm also unlikely to have a captain that I really want. Now, I still think going for an Italian defender is not a bad choice. And if you've got Berardi or if it happens to be Chiesa that starts, which is looking unlikely, I know then you could captain him instead. But on match day three, it's Switzerland versus Turkey. Maybe I'll own Yaziki from Turkey, but that's about it. I'm not going to own any Welsh players, and I'm probably not going to own any Switzerland players either. So then I've got Insigne against Wales as well, and then we're in the same situation. Now, in match day three, there's one less day to swap. So you've got the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday, and that's it. So you've got four captains. So having Insigne, who's arguably the best option for Italy, because we know he's going to start, and he's probably going to get 90 minutes. Now, seems to me like a very good choice and when i think about how my team is set up and i can get maybe one or two eight to 8.5 million midfielders i don't know if there's a better option the only player that i would consider swapping him for is jota um, and because i just think that jota is a great player that's going to more likely to get you a goal rather than an assist like insignia might do but the fact that he plays first against turkey and then wales uh, and there aren't especially 
I mean, there are to me there aren't better captaincy options on those two days. Immobile possibly, but that takes up a forward spot. Maybe a, a, an Italian attacking defender if they do end up getting a clean sheet and they get an attack in return. But I think Insigne now might be the standout cop, uh, captain option for the first days of match day one and three, and that is why he's in my squad. Didn't do himself any harm getting some returns against Czech Republic, and I thought. Um, Italy did really well, and obviously 10 returns in 10 is decent too. So I think right now, even though he hasn't been in too many of my drafts, for me, he's probably going to be a must-own just because of the capsy reasons and the fact there aren't too many other midfielders around that price that I like. So we can probably keep this one short and sweet. Denea, another 4.5 million defender. Obviously, I've got quite a few in my team, but he and Mel are the two... <laughs> I'm still trying to do it. He and May are the two... Um, that I'm probably definitely, probably definitely, definitely, I'm going to say definitely, definitely going to go with because he looks nailed on. I, I do think Belgium are one of the strongest teams. I and mean, if we're talking strongest teams, you've got to look at, uh, for the group stages, France, I mean, France, Germany, and Portugal are all quite strong, but for group stage fantasy, they're a bit of a nightmare, uh, but all very strong. Then outside of that, you've got Italy, Belgium, probably have to put England in there as well, and Spain, I think. So to get a 4.5 million, what looks like nailed on defender, he's played ten ma last 10 matches, he started eight times not really got much attacking threat from what i can see zero goals zero assists in those games but um russia than finland should be good for clean sheets and yes there's arguably other slightly more interesting options but i think in terms of nailed on this there aren't too many players i trust more than him so that's it i'm just going to keep it nice and short he's in for me i want to target as many belgian players as i can would i like to go for someone like mounier instead yes but he's just a bit too expensive for me so Denea is definitely in so it's kind of a little bit scary doing these videos because you feel like once you say this player is must own for my team, obviously they then got to be in your team, right? Uh, I mean, I could change my mind, but I don't think I'm going to on this one. Again, I think Netherlands are strong favourites in all the games, so I like that. The thing with Depay is he's involved in everything. Free kicks, penalties, he loves to shoot on site. Seven goals, four assists, so 11 returns in the last 10. He started all of them. He's absolutely nailed on, right? And the thing with Netherlands, look, I've spoken about there's a few kind of like and bearing in mind right i'm not dutch i'm not listening to this firsthand but i see um, a lot of people on twitter talking about how the tactics aren't really liked by the manager from you know what pundits are talking about they don't want to play this five at the bat but it looks like that's what they're going with and we know then the pie is going to be through the middle which is where we want him as a as a fancy asset so i do think he's definitely going to be in like if i look on my team right now, or if I think about the forwards, sorry, he's 10 million. A lot of the other players that we've been looking at, Mbappe, Ronaldo, Lewandowski, um, Kane, etc., they're all more expensive. So, yes, three premium forwards are good, but if you're going to try and fit in like Lukaku, Kane, and, I don't know, Ronaldo, for example, it gets quite pricey. The only issue for me, the only slight issue which I've spoken about before, is in match day three which is obviously something I've got my eye on because that's the strategy I'm playing. He does um, he does play the same day as, where is it? I think it's the same day as Belgium, yeah. So if you've got him and Lukaku, you can only captain one of them. But I don't think that should really change my thinking too much because on the other days, you've got Kane against Czech Republic, which is probably the best captain. And on the last day, it's Portugal, France, Germany, Hungary. So maybe a German midfielder could come in um, whoever it might be, Gnabry, Havertz, etc. Let's wait and see who plays the first two games. Or even a Spanish player, if I can fit in a Spanish player against Slovakia. Um, so I don't think it's the end of the world to have Depay and Lukaku on the same day, which is what I was thinking before, which is why I started thinking about going towards Kane instead. So for 10 million, right, this is what we want. A player that's definitely going to start, going to get good minutes, on penalties, on free kicks, likes to shoot on sight. There ain't much to hate. He's 10 million. He's cheaper than a lot of the other premium forwards as well. He's in. So there we go. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a like and hit subscribe if you're new around here. Um, obviously, let me know what you think about these five players. I will do my best now to keep them in my team because I do think there's lots of good reasons to have them. either price, value, captaincy, the day they play, etc. And that is why Insigne is in. He wasn't in before, but now he is definitely back in. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think of these players and who your must-own players are for your team. I will have a match day preview out tomorrow. I'll have my team selection hopefully out on Thursday as well, um, ahead of the deadline. That's it. We're nearly there now. So yeah, there we go. That's my must-own players. Let me know what you think below. And I'll catch you again tomorrow.